Good evening, Metal Lords and Ladies, and welcome to another edition of Metal Fairy Tales. You may remember stories of Princess Katie, a girl with metal dreams as deep as the expanse of hell and as big as the Great Abyss. Today we will journey back in time to 2008, when Katie was 20, and her path of metal conquest was still quite new. Through a mutual friend, she had the opportunity to journey to see Nightwish and Sonata Artica. However, she couldn't possibly have imagined what would await her on that magical night. Okay, so today I'm going to be telling you about the time that I went and saw Nightwish and Sonata Artica in concert. It was September 23rd, 2008. My friend's friend, who I had just met at the time, we're, we're going to call him Billy Bob, okay? He learned that I liked metal, and he said that he was going to go to Knoxville, Tennessee to see Nightwish and Sonata Artica, and that I was free to come. Now, at this point, Nightwish had had their new singer, Annette, for a little while, and I wasn't really into that, but Sonata Artica was one of my favorite bands, so I was like, yeah, let's go. I even got a couple of my girlfriends on board, so we made a day trip to Knoxville, which was about four hours away. And I remember when we got into Knoxville, we got super lost, like we couldn't find the venue. So we went to into a gas station and we were asking the cashier for directions and some lady in line was like, I'll take you, just follow me. So she guided us in her car to the venue. It was really sweet and I think we gave her like $20 or something, but I thought that was so kind that a total stranger was willing to show us where a concert venue was. The venue was called the Valerium. It was really, really nice. I think up until this point, I had only been going to the Masquerade in Atlanta. Um, so in comparison, the Valerium was like clean. It was fresh. It was it had air conditioning. It was really nice. And while we were in there, kind of waiting for the show to get started, word was getting around pretty quickly that Nightwish was not going to be playing. And sure enough, by the start of the show, all the men of Nightwish came onto stage to formally apologize for the fact that they were not going to be performing tonight. The reason was that Annette was sick in a hotel room and was not able to sing. <laughs> and I remember at this point... <laughs> oh no, I lost a flower! And I remember at this point, um, Billy Bob, he was a huge Nightwish fanboy. So he was just, <laughs> when he came into the presence of Nightwish. Well, regardless, I wasn't going to get to see Nightwish. That's fine, because like I said, I wasn't really into Annette or anything. So at the same time, it was still really cool to be able to see all the members that I was interested in up there on stage, because I was a huge Nightwish fan in high school. So anyway, um. Nightwish stepped aside and left Sonata Artica to place the nice big fat set. I had the best time. I'm pretty, I, I think this was their tour after Unia came out, which I might be pronouncing wrong. It might be Unia or something like that. So that was a really exciting time for me because I loved that album and then I loved all the albums before. And I actually went on Google and pulled that set list from that date. So I'm going to read you the songs that they played. In Black and White, Paid in Full, Replica, Eighth Commandment, Draw Me, Caleb, White Pearl, Black Oceans, Tallulah, Full Moon, Black Sheep. And then for the Encore, they played It Won't Fade, Graven Image, Don't Say a Word. Oh, that was awesome. And then, any of y'all seen Sonata Arca before? And you probably know what the last song was. The Cage! They played The Cage, which is my favorite. The Cage was the first song I ever heard by them, and it's still my favorite today. And then, of course, they wrapped it up with vodka, we need some vodka. Y'all may very well know what I'm talking about. So, yeah, it was it was really surreal, and I still, like, I still love Sonata Artica, but their albums have just kind of gone downhill for me, so it was really special to be able to see them, like, when they are still making content that I loved. I mean, even today, they still know what their greatest hits are, and they still make sure to play those at the shows and everything, but 
was nice to just be like fully in love with everything Sonata has made and be able to see them in that time. But um, during the show, I was somehow notified that Nightwish was in the crowd. So we snuck back to the very back of the crowd where Nightwish was hanging out and took some pictures with, I'm just gonna butcher these names because I don't speak Finnish. Tuomas, Thomas, Tuomas, and Yuka. That's probably right. Am I right? Anyway, so the show wrapped up and we were just kind of like hanging out. Um, somehow I wandered to the back of the venue near the tour buses and was able to take a picture with Marco from Sonata. And that was like, I was like, oh my god, oh my god. And uh, then I was like, wait, where's Billy Bob? So I texted Billy Bob and I was like, where are you? And I think at that point he called and he was like, I'm on the tour bus. Come on in. I was like, um... What? So I seriously strolled in to the tour bus and literally hung out with Nightwish and some of the boys from Sonata and a couple of other fans. Like, this happened. I'm still looking back like, is this happened? <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, hi, Caroline. That's, she's my sister. She couldn't come. Oh, what is it? Hi, Caroline. I read on this. Are you ready? Yeah. Hi, Caroline. Do you like bananas? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she likes bananas. It was funnier that way. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote my name. Okay. So, yeah, Tony was not there, of course. Of course. Um, but I got to hang out with all of Nightwish. And we, we literally sat, ate, drank, and just talked like friends. It was the coolest thing. It was so much fun. It was like a dream come true. Actually, I probably wouldn't have even dreamed this because it was so incredible. Um, the tour bus was really nice. You know, it was one of those fancy ones with like the seating area, the kitchen, and had a whole bunch of food and had a sound system. So we were listening to tarot the whole time. And I think they actually gave us some tarot CDs. And we just talked about everything. Like we even talked about the differences between the laws in the US and the laws in Finland. And we even talked about Tarya for a minute. But even at that point, it was pretty clear um, she was not going to be coming back. There was still hope back then, you know. You know what? And while we're here, I'm going to share this super fun fact about Nightwish. These men open their beer bottles with their teeth. Yes, and I have proof. These are two beer bottle caps from this night. Um, and I'm pretty sure, I think this one was definitely opened by Marco's teeth. Um, and I don't know about the other, and I have, I have three, actually. Um, but, yeah, you can literally see, like, the two indentions from two teeth open with his teeth. I used to carry this around in my purse everywhere, and that's why it looks kind of dirty. So, I always keep these bottle caps as just a reminder of that extremely surreal, incredible night. I never wanted to be one of those fans who's like too imposing or too obsessive or like who bothers the musicians. So typically I'm just like, no, I don't want to go say anything to them. But for some reason this night I was just able to jump on this the bandwagon with Billy Bob and um, hop on the tour bus. And it was also on this date that I was talking to my husband. We were kind of like talking, you know that, like pre-dating, just talking. Um, and I remember telling him like, I'm on the band's tour bus right now. And he responded like, you've got to be the coolest girl I've ever met. <laughs>
Okay, anyway, finally it was time to evacuate the bus for whatever reason. And somebody, I don't know who, somebody gave us a ride in the back of its pickup truck back to our car. And I just remember, like, the feel of the warm summer air rushing all around us and just, like, the, the orange streetlight glow and just that complete feeling of shock. Being shook. That was before shook was a thing. But we were shook. We were stunned. We were ecstatic. We were just going, woo! And just screaming and laughing. Oh my gosh, because we still could not believe this had just happened to us. Billy Bob's eyes were so red from just like this emotional roller coaster of not being able to see Nightwish, but then being able to meet Nightwish. And my girlfriends thought that this whole night was just the bee's knees, even though they weren't necessarily like long term fans of these bands. They were just, they were shook too. Well, we didn't get back until about 4 a.m. And I was in college at this time, so I had class in the morning. And that was hard, but you know, sometimes happiness overrules the tiredness. And that, that was the situation on September 24th, the next day. That was my recounting as I remembered it. Um, but I do have my journal from that time. So I, I'm just gonna like hit the highlights and get my perspective from the day after it actually happened. Today was a big day and little did I know it, one of the best, most monumental days of my life. Girlfriend number one, girlfriend number two and I were going with our new friend Billy Bob to Knoxville to see Sonata Artica and Nightwish. We were all pumped. We met up and left about two, all beautiful and excited. We listened to Nightwish, Sonata, and other gothic metal girly bands. Girlfriend number one had just made a new Facebook friend and it turns out he lives in Knoxville. We got close and had to take a detour and got lost. A nice lady at a gas station showed us how to get into town. Then we called girlfriend number one's internet friend and he showed us the Valerium. Oh, okay, so that's what happened. I remembered wrong. Knoxville is a nice place. There was a time change and Billy Bob was freaking out about being late, but I told him not to worry. Girlfriend number one's friend told us that he heard the Nightwish singer was sick. We got there and sure enough, Nightwish wasn't playing, so Sonata Artica was playing for free. I forgot that was for free. Whatever. And that's who I really wanted to see. Yay, refunds for all. The Valerium was really nice, so much nicer than the Masquerade. We went outside in the, to the smoking patio and met new people. There was a wide array of people there. We met an old lady metalhead with a tear shirt on. Some goth girls and this 28 year old guy who was like obsessed with me. Ew. Uh, I don't remember that. There's so much I don't remember. Well, some time passed and we got pretty close before the show started. Oh, pretty close to the stage. And soon, out came the guys from Nightwish to apologize. I was starstruck. I freaked out and screamed my head off. I teared up. Girlfriend number two teared up. And Billy Bob was boohooing. We were basking in their beautiful presence and soon they left. And out burst Sonata Artica with In Black and White. Okay, this impact hit me like a giant wave of everything I've ever loved and desired. I was so close. They sounded so perfect. It was all coming to life now. Here, I cried. Wow. It was pure amazement. So humbling. Like seeing God or something for someone who cared about God. <laughs> Next, they play Paid in Full, Eighth Commandment, Draw Me. They also play White Pearls, Black Oceans, Don't Say a Word, and lots of others. Nice long set. Full Moon too. As the end drew near, Tony said they had one more song. I was dying for the cage. Half of the people were screaming Victoria's Secret. Half of them were screaming the cage. And then, an explosion of... The cage. I freaked out. It was so good. My heart was so happy. Oh yeah, halfway through Sonata, that guy that was in love with me. Why don't I remember that at all? That guy that was in love with me told us that Nightwish was in the back. So we met and took pictures with the beautiful drummer and keyboardist. And I hugged Tual Tualmas. Sorry. We were so excited. After the amazing show, we hung out and talked for a while. Then we went around back because Billy Bob was set on meeting Marco. 
The guitarist from Sonata was out there, and we met him. Creepy guy followed us drunk. I tried to get the guitarist to let me record him saying hello to my little sister, but he was too shy. I called Billy Bob, asking where he was, and he was with girlfriend number two in the Nightwish tour bus, and he told me and girlfriend number one to come on up. Oh my God. And there was Marco. We all got pictures with him and hung out. Half of the people in there were speaking Finnish. Ha ha. There were so many drunk Finns in there. There was a tall, long-haired, blonde, very drunk, blonde man who liked to pet everyone on the head. We hung out in there for like two hours. It was amazing. I couldn't believe it was happening. But at the same time, we had to act cool and be chill. We spent the most time with Marco and Impu. Marco could open beer bottles with his teeth. <laughs> they were hilarious. We talked with them about all the differences between Finland and America, like drinking age and lots of other stuff. I met a girl from Finland, but she left. Talked to a really cool lady who was from Mississippi. We had such a great time. The keyboardist, guitarist, and bassist from Sonata came on the bus. Ah, we just had the best night of our lives, I swear. When they had to go to bed, I hugged everyone goodbye, and we rode in the back of, ah, it was girlfriend number one's Facebook friend. We rode in the back of his truck to our car. We were screaming and reveling in joy, excitement, contentment, and disbelief. We talked about how we didn't care if we died right now, how perfect this was. Then we headed home. Our ride home was quite long, and I had to fight to stay awake. We finally got home at 4.30 a.m., still saying, oh my god, I can't believe that happened, and then I crashed. It didn't matter how tired I was, because I was so entirely happy and content, still in excited disbelief, still smiling wide when I would think about this amazing reality. That night showed me that dreams can come true, miracles are possible, anything can happen. Sometimes you just have to be aggressive and go for it with no fear. It showed me that life can be so amazing. I am so lucky. And meeting those guys, they are real people. Not intimidating at all. They're just real and nice and down to earth and chill. My eyes have been open to all the possibilities of things I can experience. Things I can get if I just take chances and go for it. I can't forget these things. I'm feeling like a much more significant person lately. I must remember all the things I have done and all the things that are possible for me. Okay, that that was my night. Um, I know it was kind of a weird format for me to tell you how I remember it and then me to tell you how it happened, but I still think it was kind of cool, kind of a cool contrast to see like how much I forgot, but it, it was kind of like reinvigorating to really revisit those memories and relive all the details again. That might have been a once in a lifetime chance. But I'm still like, I am cool. I am a princess. This concludes another metal fairy tale. As you might imagine, Katie continued to live happily ever after, holding the memories of that night close to her heart always, thanking the metal gods for all the blessings bestowed. Have a metal evening, and I'll see you in the next edition of Metal Fairy Tale. Oh uh, yeah, this is like my first time wearing false eyelashes in uh, 11 years. I did kind of like a sloppy job, but it's it feels pretty cool. I might make this a thing.